Tim's News Explosion. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tim's News Explosion on this Monday, the 7th of February, 2023. We are live tonight on the Wilmsfront YouTube and DLive channels, as well as on the Interactive Entropy software, uh, where you can send through a direct question and even better yet, send through a super chat to support the production of not just Tim's News Explosion, but other unshackled productions. It is 8.30 p.m. here in Melbourne, Victoria, where we now have a person squatting in one of our 12 Senate seats in the, the federal parliament, the Senate. Uh, Lydia Thorpe today resigned as a member of the Greens. Uh, she is only seven months into a six-year term as a senator for Victoria. Uh, she says she's resigning because she wants to lead what she calls the black, with no C in it, B-L-A-K, sovereign movement. Uh, so the reason why I say she's squashing in the Senate is because she, there is no way that she wouldn't have been elected at the 2022 federal election unless she was top of the Victorian Greens uh, Senate tech ticket. Uh, so even though she's left there, the Greens, the party that got her into Parliament and well, selected her in 2020 to replace Richard Di Natale and then obviously re-endorsed her again in 2022, us Victorians are stuck with her as uh, one of our representatives in the Senate until uh, 30th of June 2028. Uh, so her resignation uh, statement, uh, she says, this country has a strong grassroots black sovereign movement full of staunch and committed warriors, and I want to represent that movement fully in Parliament. It's become clear to me that I cannot do that from within the Greens, now I'll be able to speak freely on all issues from a sovereign perspective without being constrained by portfolios and agreed party positions, because the, the Greens agreed to support the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, voice to parliament referendum to enshrine it in the, the constitution. Uh, so even though, as she admits, that Greens MPs, members and supporters uh, want to support the voice, uh, she says this is at odds with the community of activists who are saying treaty before voice. This is the message delivered on the streets on January 26. This is the movement I was raised in. My elders marched for treaty. This is who I am. Uh, she also obviously uh, was raised by a white father as well. She has obviously uh, white grandparents on that side of the family and white white ancestors going back generations as well on her on her father's fa her father's side. Uh, so it says, uh, she goes down, my focus from now is to grow and amplify the black sovereign movement across the nation. I've spent my entire life fighting for justice, defend our sovereignty to save black lives. Remember, there's no C in black. That is my goal. My strength and conviction comes from a lifetime of acti activism from my ancestors on your mother's side and from my matriarchs who continue to say to me every day, keep infiltrating, keep your integrity, keep the fire burning, keep our fight, fight alive. To my mob, I say this, your strength is my strength, your fight is my fight, blah, 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 blah. I won't finish, finish saying that. Uh, I'm a stupid moron says, uh, can we start a white movement? No, of course you can't. That is... Uh, uh, extremely racist, but it's it's perfectly okay for 
a uh, Lydia Thorpe to uh, be part of a, or she said black sov a sovereign movement. So is she now a sovereign citizen? Well, she doesn't recognize the Australian government at all. She believes that there's still a, a war going on between uh, the indigenous tribes and uh, the white uh, uh, colonizers. So she, basically she should be part of the, the new uh, sovereign citizen uh, surveillance crackdown that the, the national cabinet announced as well. And this is the, the uh, she, she didn't just release a statement, but she also uh, read it at a press conference uh, earlier today. I've told Greens, Adam Bant and the Senate president that I am resigning from the Greens to sit on the Senate crossbench. This country has a strong grassroots black sovereign movement full of staunch and committed warriors. And I want to represent that movement fully in this parliament. It has become clear to me that I can't do that from within the Greens. Now, in my article this afternoon, I also went through some of uh, Lydia Thorpe's most uh, appalling moments uh, as a Green in the Senate. Remember that uh, it's, well, the, it's the Greens' fault that uh, we're stuck with her and also that they themselves are down a vote for uh, the next uh, five and a half years. I mean, what's the expression? You reap what you, what you sow. I mean, uh, Adam Bant was basically cucked by Lydia Thorpe. He was uh, scared to say much against her, only really gave her a, a slap on the wrist uh, when it was revealed her relationship with former Re Rebels uh, bikey boss Dean Martin. But obviously, uh, this means now that in the oh in the in the Senate at least, uh, there's going to be. A, a multiple a campaigners uh, for the the no vote. Obviously, Lydia Thorpe is coming from it from a a black uh, sovereignty point of view that uh, she believes that catchphrase sovereignty was never ceded. Uh, this is stolen land, blah blah blah. And then, of course, uh, you have uh, Jacinta Price, who is part of the the no vote because she doesn't believe that uh, this will give any uh, extra real voice uh, to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Warren Mundine is the former Labor Party president in the, the 2000s, and he was the Liberal Party candidate for Gilmore at the 2019 federal election and was uh, Tony Abbott when he was Prime Minister, uh, Indigenous advisor. Uh, so, Warren Mundine, he's spearheading the no case, but he's still advocating for a constitutional recognition. Uh, this was actually Tony Abbott's idea to recognise both Aboriginal uh, people in the, the, the preamble, uh, along with uh, British uh, settlers, and uh, also recognise Australia's uh, migrant story as well. Uh, so that is actually... See, seems a bit more complex than the voice. I mean, how are you going to, to word the recognition of uh, Aboriginal history and also the uh, the stories of migrants? And of course, the, the High Court will want to, in, will probably interpret that, could interpret that uh, in particular ways. They could rule that uh, recognising migrants in the, the, the constitution uh, could basically it could basically mean that Australia's borders have to be open uh, to anyone uh, forever. And as uh, Lady of Charlotte says, uh, Lydia Thorpe's dad is a long-standing member of One Nation. She has daddy issues. Senator Slayer says, "I personally support the voice." Can you please explain further? That seems quite quite strange. Uh, Jacinta Price was actually on 7.30 uh, with uh, Sarah Ferguson uh, talking about her opposition to the, the Voice, because as we know that uh, Anthony Albanese, 
Uh, he hasn't been listening to Aboriginal uh, voices when it comes to the, the crime crisis in Alice Springs, which is fueled in part by the lifting of grog restrictions and also the abolition of the cashless welfare card. ABC 730, they actually had a story on uh, the crime crisis in Alice Springs, and it was uh, much, uh, I would say, much better journalism than what ABC News aired last week uh, about a crisis uh, meeting in Alice Springs. This was their ABC TV report. The negligence that we are being provided by our government needs to stop. Alice Springs is a town at the end of its tether. We're going to have to rebuild it off our own back because no one else is stepping up to do it for us. After months of ongoing violence and vandalism, locals are losing hope and patience. To have the windows smashed and to have the car drive through and just do a ram raid for the sake of it, they can just disrespect us and do whatever they like and there are no consequences. Local business owner and long-term resident Garth Thompson convened the meeting. We need to call out the government on what they're doing. They have the ability to fix these problems and move them on but they choose not to. Within just 20 minutes, the meeting took a turn. Every single time you see what a group of kids, whoever they are, during school time, ring the police, do a welfare check. Hey, have a look at that clown over there in the brown and yellow shirt. Why don't you come up here, mate? We need to bring welfare to these kids. They deserve it. We spoke to several attendees. Some non-Indigenous people said the meeting was distressing. Others incited violence against Aboriginal people. Like this man, the ABC spoke to outside. The little black fuck is going to get started to get built. If something doesn't come out of it, they're going to start getting flogged. And they won't come back. Because personally, myself, will take them out the scrub and leave them there. Wouldn't that be called lynching? I don't really give a shit what it's called. It'll solve the fucking problem, and I'm over it. We don't want the racism side to start taking effect, which we know is happening. And Alice Springs is very racist. You know, mm -hmm. We feel it every day. It's just a total white supremacist fest in there, and I'll tell you what, the vibe, it was scary. Why not uh, talk about it, sit with us and invite us in, but don't bring in the crowd like they did today. We're just hoping for change, something to change. I mean, it's a sad situation here in Alice, but um, if people don't bond together, you ain't going to get change. A town divided hoping for unity. Carly Williams, ABC News. And as Lady of Shalott uh, said about that reporter, she flew out as fast as hell. Yes, yeah, she was a, a FIFO uh, reporter. She wasn't from the, the ABC's local Alice Springs uh, Bureau there and well refreshingly uh there was mass outrage uh, against uh the smearing of the uh concerned locals at uh, this meeting by the abc and there was a demands for a apology and retraction from the abc i don't know who that uh voiceless man was who talked about giving them flogging but he actually sounded to me aboriginal himself they tried to obviously uh betray him as a white racist but that voice sounded aboriginal to me which is probably why they didn't actually show what he looks like there and there was a what is it a not a an apology retraction but a correction clarification on the abc news website uh, so it says on january 31 uh, the program broadcast a report gathered the previous evening on a community meeting held in alice springs to discuss the recent upsurge in violence and to discuss compensation and solutions the item was replayed on news radio later in the morning the, rep the report included the views of some people who attended the community meeting and their immediate reaction the views reported the views were reported accurately. However, this report should have included a broader range of 
perspectives expressed at the meeting and further information about what was discussed to provide additional context. ABC News apologised to audience for providing an incomplete picture of the event in this instance. Following this report, ABC News published additional coverage of the issue, which included a broader range of perspectives and context. So the ABC is just sorry that uh, we didn't air more, more rational uh, people who are concerned about what is happening to the Alice Springs, uh, scared locals, uh, the kids roaming the street at night. I mean, there's been numerous uh, videos published about what happens at night in Alice Springs. Uh, a whole bunch were, were filmed by a, a nurse who has a business there. Uh, this was one uh, that was on social media. <laughs> As uh, Lady of Shalott again uh, correctly pointed out, white uh, white people trying to ignore it all—they're just sitting there in the pub, they're just like yeah, ignoring it all, uh, just being social. I guess sadly that they're they may be used to it as well. And yeah, you did see, as a lot of people have uh, pointed out in the in the chat, uh, a lot of anti-white racism uh by uh some of those uh dark-skinned uh people uh who were in that uh, video there are lots of these videos online i uh, the two main twitter accounts that uh, have you'd sort of say catalog that are collect uh, collecting collecting these there's the meanwhile in melbourne uh, account uh which used to be sack sally cap and there is also Clown Down Under, uh, which is obviously a local spin-off of Clown World uh, today. Uh, so certainly, that's I use those accounts to do my research about uh, what is actually happening uh, around Australia. Uh, so I'll certainly follow them to for some actual raw footage, not what is uh, filtered through to uh, and sanitized by the the mainstream media. Uh, now, that wasn't all that was uh, said on the ABC about that town hall meeting in Alice Springs in that uh, report. Uh, remember uh, Noreen Young, uh, she uh, was on the drum uh, before the election claiming that uh, Anglo men uh, eat white uh, bread and uh, it means that uh, because they eat white bread, they they don't have a, a they don't have a feeling of of working people. Now she has uh, compared the Alice Springs meeting uh, to the Hollywood movie uh, Mississippi Burning, which was about 
uh, the race hate murders of uh, three civil rights activists by the the KKK uh, in Mississippi in the the 1960s. Yes, how dare uh, people living in a town who happen to be white and are being terrorised by crime at night, how dare they hold a meeting uh, to express their concerns and want and proposing uh, solutions. I mean, last time I checked, white people lived in Alice Springs and uh, they are the victims of, of crimes. White people are allowed to move there uh, as well. It's not a, it's not a racist town. Uh, so if you live there, you should be able to have your say about that. Uh, and this is the crisis in Alice Springs. Uh, it is the local, the, the, the local mayor and local, uh, uh, local federal Labor MP, uh, they have both described this as a, a crisis as well. And uh, we had uh, some a decision uh, by the Northern Territory Chief Minister Natasha Files: alcohol bans to be reinstated in town camps and remote communities. Well, sort of. Uh, so uh, Natasha Files has said, let me be clear, this is not stronger future. This is NT legislations that allow a clear process. Uh, so what it will be, that she said, dry zones will remain in place across Central Australia until alcohol management plans can be uh, developed by each community. Any community which wish to live restrictions will require 60% of residents to vote in agreement because she says that she doesn't want a racist policy. And when she claims that burning alcohol in a town, having it as a dry town, is apparently still racist. I'm not sure if it's a, if, uh, if uh, banning something in a certain town uh, can, be, can be racist. Uh, but do you know what is is going to help uh, the solve the crime crisis in Alice Springs? Not just the voice, uh, but uh, changing Australia's five dollar note. Uh, so the Reserve Bank announced late last week uh, that uh, King Charles the Third would not replace uh, Queen Elizabeth on our five dollar note, and instead. Uh, uh, Treasurer Jim Chalmers uh, said uh, that uh, the Reserve Bank had decided to replace Queen Elizabeth uh, with uh, a design that would honour the culture and history of First Nations Australians. Take will take a number of years to be designed and printed after consultation with Indigenous elders. And so Chalmers said, it's important to remember the monarch will, will continue to be on our coins. It's important to strike a good balance here. Uh, Peter Dutton just slammed this as woke nonsense, warning that it was an attack on our systems and institutions. And uh, Peter Dutton said, I know the silent majority don't agree with a lot of the woke nonsense that goes on. Well, given uh, that uh, the inflation crisis uh, that is still uh, pervasive around uh, Australia, the Reserve Bank is going to be raising interest rates again tomorrow. It's all but certain. I mean, will a $5 note with Aboriginal history and culture on it actually be worth anything? That's the thing. Uh, I mean, will a $5 note, will, will the will actually be used uh, by many people uh, when it is actually into to circulation because we know how much uh, governments and the globalists have been uh, pushing uh, the cashless society. Uh, Bill Shorten is again pushing the, the MyGov uh, one digital uh, ID. Uh, so certainly uh, <laughs> they, they, they might put uh, some Aborigines on the $5 note, um, but it might not be used by many people. Now we had the at the the national cabinet meeting last Friday. Uh, all uh, state and territory leaders, including the Liberal Premier of Tasmania, uh, Jeremy Rockcliffe, and the Liberal Premier of New South Wales, uh, Dominic Perrottet, uh, sign 
a it was called a statement on intent to uh, support uh, the voice. And uh, this is them uh, signing it all here. And this was uh, Albo's uh, selfie uh, the the night before at the the national cabinet dinner uh, with all the the Labor uh, chief ministers and premiers there because uh, Perrottet and Rockcliffe basically labor light and uh dominic perrote he signed this tape statement of intent without consulting with uh, his uh, coalition cabinet uh, which you're supposed to do in the westminster system it was a captain's call and he was uh, on stage uh with albo at the australia day concert uh talking about how important the voice was well it's about two well, it's... things and two things only the first thing is recognition to recognize in our nation's birth certificate our constitution the fact that we live with the oldest continuous culture on earth that should be a source of great pride and secondly it's that aboriginal and Torres Strait islander people should be consulted on matters that affect them through the voice that is all that is before the australian people those important principles and I must say it is fantastic that every Premier and Chief Minister are all united in our support for this going forward. It will be a unifying moment for the nation. We need to come together as one nation and be unified. Uh, we support as a government the voice. Uh, and you know, I've also gone on my own journey. And it was last year, following the Australia Day service, uh, that we put the Aboriginal flag on the Harbour Bridge. Now, that is not something to divide. That is something to unite our great country. And I think that's exactly what it's done. Now, also at National Cabinet on Friday, the... They got a briefing uh, from ASIO Director General Mike Burgess about the the threat of the the sovereign citizens and you know, far right extremism, uh, which was obviously re put into the the national spotlight after uh, those uh, two police officers and a neighbour uh, were killed uh, by the train trio, who later themselves were were killed uh, by a special ops. Uh, police team and say so this is what uh, Anthony Albanese said in response I think it was to a question by Guardian uh, journalist Paul Karp who's a a lefty PM uh, you mentioned uh, right-wing extremism and sovereign citizens could I ask for an update on the terrorism law reforms that Claire O'Neill has flagged previously um, and if I could ask a, I guess a more personal reflection what's your concern specifically about right-wing extremism, extremism, sovereign citizens, and to the Queensland shooting, do you consider that an act of domestic terrorism? Um, on uh, the work that Claire O'Neill is doing, I'm always cautious to talk publicly about national security issues uh, before they've gone through proper processes. Uh, but that, that work is certainly uh, underway and is substantial. I think the fact that uh, the uh, states and territories uh, last night. This is revealing something that isn't confidential. It came out of, out of the discussion we had last night, where uh, Anastasia was, uh, Premier Palaszczuk was due to report today on the national firearms issue. Um, I attended, uh, of course, at the, the funeral service of the victims who were murdered. Uh, it was one of the most uh, moving things that, that I've done in, in my life. And I think that when you have uh, people who are on the front line uh, every day, uh, our police officers uh, murdered these young people, young man, young woman, uh, potentially as well, one other wounded, uh, the, the, the catastrophic, uh, premeditated, calculated murder that occurred there on the basis of a warped uh, ideology, uh, then it requires uh, us to do what we can to keep uh, the citizens we all represent safe. And so hence the, the uh, report this morning uh, from uh, Mr Burgess uh, that went into, as 
high-level briefing went into details that I won't go into here. Uh, but we know uh, that uh, the threat is real and tragically we've seen the consequences of it. Did you notice then that Albo, he got his words mixed up? He said uh, that these uh, three people were murdered by police officers. He actually got, I, I assume, uh, he, he misspoke there, but that's quite a, a big misspeak there. And uh, now the National Cabinet meeting uh, was in Sydney, not in Canberra. Uh, New South Wales uh, is uh, where there will be a state election on Saturday, March 25th, and the Unshackled uh, will have a election night live stream as uh, usual. I uh, have a, a panel uh, returning. Uh, it will be uh, definitely uh, Kyle Kutazi, who's been on previous election night uh, live streams. Uh, he uh, was last year elected to the, the New South Wales Liberal uh, State Executive, but then he was uh, kicked off as soon as, well, uh, <laughs> almost, almost as soon as he was elected, accused of, of branch uh, stacking. Uh, that uh, that uh, his alleged conduct was uh, written by Nick McKenzie in the, the Age, so I'm sure it must be true if it's been written by him. Uh, they only had to uh, retract uh, the Age, uh, one of Nick's, Nick McKenzie's uh, 60 Minutes uh, reports on Liberal uh, Victorian alleged branch stacking uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there, I noticed that correction in the age from that uh, uh, Nick McKenzie 60 Minutes piece that was in the middle of uh, 2020, I uh, believe. Now, obviously, Nick McKenzie did that uh, hit piece on uh, the, the the now uh, Liberal MLC for Victoria, Renee Heath, her father's church, describing her father as engaging in sick conduct for having one of his daughters marry a same-sex attracted man and described their church as having hateful views. Uh, well, the there is, a, of course, another anti Christian investigative reporter, Louise Milligan at the ABC. And uh, that Nick McKenzie report was just before the Victorian election. And so Louise Milligan, coincidentally, just before the, the New South Wales uh, state election, has uh, last Monday during this show aired a expose on Opus Day schools, uh, which just happens to be the Catholic sect uh, that uh, Dominic Perrottet and his uh, family are a part of, and uh, which he attended, was a school captain of, of one of the Opus Dei schools, and all his uh, siblings attend as well. And basically, the I watched it last night, so I could basically give you the, the summary of it. And basically, the what uh, this this school was being accused of is that it was teaching uh, well in particular its female uh, students uh not to be a uh, sluts uh dress modestly uh they that uh, they said that uh pornography uh makes holes in your brain well allegedly that was what's uh four corners uh reported uh they taught and uh, also that uh, they discouraged uh, girls from having the HPV vaccine uh, because they wouldn't need it unless they were going to be uh, sleeping around. But uh, basically, all the, the the you would only view what uh, the, these Opus Day schools as as bad is if you like Louise Milligan. She presents the Opus Dei beliefs and practices, which they're not being accused of criminal conduct, but it's basically, it's it's like it's already implied that uh, these sort of schools and views shouldn't exist in modern progressive society. And of course, they shouldn't receive taxpayer funds as well. So it was basically a big 
nothing burger there. And Dominic Perrottet the next day said that, well, the accusations of bullying at Opus Day schools, that should be investigated uh, for some of this uh, misconduct that is alleged misconduct that has been raised. Uh, the Education Standards Authority is going to investigate. And he had a, a fantastic experience at uh, Opus Day uh, schools and made lifelong friends as well. And the next day, um, the former CEO of Clubs New South Wales decided to get in on the, the Catholic bashing. Uh, so Clubs New South Wales CEO John Landis uh, said, accused uh, Dominic Perrette of not understanding uh, gambling uh, reform legislation because he's pushing for all clubs to be uh, cashless by 2028 and accused him of acting on his conservative Catholic gut, which, I mean, there is plenty of atheists and other uh, religious people against uh, the pervasiveness of poke machines. The statistic I, I keep uh, keep hearing being put around is that uh, New South Wales has the most poker machines in the world outside of the, the US state of Nevada. So that was the end of a cl uh, the club's New South Wales CEO, Josh Landis. And uh, so they're on the hunt for a new uh, CEO. And uh, apparently, a former New South Wales Deputy Premier, John Barillaro, is interested in the in the job. Uh, he had a, his uh, assault charge against a, a cameraman in, in Bondi uh, thrown out on mental health grounds. Uh, that was on Friday. On Sunday, he was also a in the news. Well, I think actually on that same day, he was in the news uh, for an Auditor General report uh, accusing him of pork barreling, uh, pork barrelaring. He referred to himself as pork barrelaro, uh, accusing him of pork uh, bar uh, barreling. That's a bit of a tongue twister there. Uh, bushfire recovery funds. And also today, the parliamentary report has been released on his attempt to uh, get himself appointed to the New York Trade Commissioner role with the New South Wales government for $500,000 a year. I'm Stephen Moran says, what about our friend Andrew O'Keefe, Tim? Yes, uh, his, his downfall is, is well, well uh, known now. And there was also a, another high-profile uh, Australian who uh, was in court on Friday, Nick Kyrgios. He had a, a common assault uh, charge uh, thrown out of the ACT magistrate's court against his ex-girlfriend. He pleaded guilty, but it was still thrown out. The magistrate said because yeah, he, he pushed his girlfriend, then-girlfriend, and she fell over because she wouldn't get out of the way so he could exit an Uber. And she fell to the ground and said that she she grazed her, her knee and an elbow. Magistrate said this is basically a toxic relationship, wasn't good for either of you. And so just left it at that as well. So we'll see if because he's now he's now being labeled by some as a domestic abuser, Nick Curios, whether I mean this is the the event or scandal that uh, brings him down. Now, the polling for the New South Wales state election, uh, Dominic Parate, uh, despite him uh, being from the conservative faction of the New South Wales Liberal Party, uh, he is basically governing like a Labor light premier. It's not doing him well in the polls. Uh, the coalition still trail Labor uh, under the leadership of opposition leader Chris Minns, 56-44. Uh, One Nation uh, support is uh, surging. Mark Latham, he's resigned so he can run for a another eight-year term so he can basically be top of the ticket again and hopefully get a, a, another two or even three upper house seats uh, for an eight-year term. And they also announced a, a number of uh, Indian Australian candidates to, to run in Western Sydney. They're really going after the, the migrant vote, uh, particularly the religious freedom uh, vote in Western Sydney there. 
Now, also last week in in Sydney uh, was the the funeral of uh, George Pell at St Mary's Cathedral. Uh, Dominic Perrette uh, did not go, despite him being a Catholic. Anthony Albanese didn't, despite him being a Catholic, though he's not really <laughs> that devout. Uh, opposition Peter, uh, opposition leader Peter Dutton was there. Uh, so was former Prime Ministers uh, Tony Abbott, uh, John Howard. Alan Jones was there. His show is back tomorrow night on ADH TV, which I'm looking forward to. And uh, Mark Latham was there as well. There was uh, some people saying, I wonder if uh, Mark gave uh, John another bone crunching uh, handshake there. But uh, there were disgustingly, apparently, uh, protests outside his funeral. I mean, it's like a, a reverse West Westboro Baptist Church uh, funeral protest. Remember, they used to, to protest the funerals of, of dead US soldiers because they supported a nation uh, that uh, loved gays. Uh, so these, uh, uh, many of them were LGBT activists. Uh, they chanted things like, George Pell, go to hell, and also uh, played this song on the loudspeaker. <laughs> And also uh, two of the the chaser guys, uh, they turned up at St. Mary's Cathedral for a stunt uh, uh, with a casket of uh, evidence of uh, child sexual abuse that they said they wanted buried next to George Pell. Look, sorry, Mike, can, we, can, we just, Mike, can we just come in? There's, it's hey, really hey, heavy, don't, there's don't quite a lot here. Don't touch me, I've got an order book. So wait, wait a minute, is this an issue of consent? Because I don't understand, that's never worried you before. Um, you can't, can we, can we please go in? What, what's the problem? This is what he would have wanted, this, the whole of non disclosure agreement. Sorry mate. Maybe because they've been doing this, no problem. Yeah. They've been doing it for decades. I'm sure someone more senior would want all this evidence buried. I promise you. But... Now, I wonder if those uh, protesting uh, Powell's funeral, uh, will any of them be charged under the, because New South Wales has the same law as Victoria, a, a summary offence for disturbing religious worship that uh, Senator Slayer Neil Erickson was uh, found guilty of twice and spent he spent 30 days in jail for uh, disturbing uh, Islamic prayers at Federation Square, which isn't even a mosque. And also, uh, so that was 30 days and it was 40 days for disturbing that uh, gay church in Hawthorne, which uh, doesn't exist anymore because apparently uh, he triggered them so much that they're, they're scarred from, from, from going there. Now, according to the, the summary offence, they, they don't have to be in the church to disturb it, and certainly they were causing a disturbance there. And I'll also point out the irony of them uh, they, they, they obviously they don't like the the Catholic Church these protesters, but they still believe in hell, which is a a Christian obviously a Christian concept. Uh, so they they obviously still have Christian beliefs if they uh, believe that there's a hell. And that's something that uh, Tony Abbott uh, pointed out in his eulogy. He believes that George Powell. Uh, should be made a saint. I also forgot to mention Fred Nile, uh, the retiring uh, Christian Democrat MLC, was also in attendance. Uh, he's in his late 80s now. And I'm sure that uh, the same sort of people, uh, when he passes uh, soon as well, will probably be protesting uh, at his funeral. They, they actually protested at his uh, wedding when his wife, uh, Elaine, died. He remarried. They protested outside his wedding because uh, he uh, didn't support a same, same sex marriage. Now, uh, we had, uh, speaking of uh, LGBT stuff, 
I still just stick to those four letters. Uh, there was a the Melbourne uh, Midsummer uh, Pride uh, Parade, and uh, Dan Andrews, the Premier, uh, led the uh, parade. I mean, his government uh, funds that. Uh, but uh, there was an unwelcome question that he got asked, uh, which is very. This doesn't happen to Dan Andrews since he is. Uh, since his public appearances are well controlled, he was asked about uh, the continuing uh, vaccine mandates in in healthcare. Premier, when are you going to drop the vaccine mandates for police in the health setting? There are vaccine mandates in place at a national level, and they remain there. And uh, all the volunteer bodies have dropped them, life saving Victoria, SES, and CFA. When are you going to do Vaccines it? are now a feature of employment law not mandates under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act, uh, but there are some nationally consistent approaches in relation to those who work in sensitive settings, for instance, aged care workers and uh, hospital workers. And I'm neither here, I'm ne I'm neither here, I'm neither here to apologise for saving no, lives. No, I won't. So you got that right, we could agree on that. We can absolutely agree on that. Well, I'm not sure that you're, a, or you're an accredited journalist at a press conference. So happy pride to you. All the very best. Let me let me make one thing very clear to you, sir. Vaccines work, That's what you said and I'm absolutely, absolutely, absolutely pro-vaccine. Pro-vaccine, and I'll leave you to others can judge who's being stupid at the moment. Uh, science is important. Science is very important. Well, all the best to you. If you want to abuse me, well, you've done a bit of that. Uh, any? Are there any questions? Uh, Pete Ozyman, no. There's not enough. Pride holidays. I mean, this is just uh, Melbourne's. Uh, now, it wasn't just uh, the Labor representatives there. Uh, so Dan was with his uh, Equalities Minister, Harriet Singh, married to his Chief of Staff, Lizzie Ratcliffe. And uh, behind them was Josh Burns, the Federal Labor MP for McNamara. I don't think Josh Burns is, is, is gay. He's straight, but he's the, the local member in St Kilda, uh, where it's held. The Liberal opposition uh, were there, uh, almost uh, all of their, their front bench. Uh, so there's the new opposition leader, John Pesciuto, Deputy David Southwick, Upper House Leader Georgie Crozer, Member for Brighton, James Newbury, new member for Q, Jess Wilson, uh, Deputy Upper House leader Matthew Back, and so they've got signs celebrating their achievements in Victoria, decriminalising homosexuality, uh, introducing in 1995 anti-discrimination legislation, Turnbull government legislating for marriage equality, as they call it, and also uh, listing the HIV prevention drug PrEP on the PBS. If you don't know what PrEP is, it allows gays to have intercourse without condoms. That's basically how I'll describe it. And uh, there was also the Teals were there. Uh, there is uh, Zoe Daniel and uh, Monique Ryan. Uh, she didn't have a mask on uh, for this event, even though it's in a, in a crowded space there. Now, obviously, uh, Monique Ryan was in the, the news uh, this week uh, because uh, she is in a employment dispute with her lesbian chief of staff, uh, Sally Rugg. Uh, the fact that one of Australia's most uh, famous uh, lesbian activists has the surname Rugg, <laughs> so, uh, occasionally she's been called Sally Rugg Muncher. I'm sure she's got that for a lot of her life since she, she came out. And uh, you can see that this is uh, Monique Ryan uh, outside of the, the federal court. and. She could wear more flattering clothing than that. I mean, this is the woman that supposedly, you know, she's she's uh, she's for she's she's pro health health. She doesn't look very healthy with, like, just yeah, look at her there. But yes, yeah, so her her chief of staff Sally Rugg. Uh, so she's former Get Up campaigns director and Change.org director. Uh, she has taken Monique Ryan uh, to the federal court. Uh, for asking her to work unreasonable hours. So she's seeking orders from the Fair Work Commission 
that the federal government as an employer engaged in hostile conduct in the, the workplace. And so now they are going to engage in a mediation. Uh, so Sally Rugg is, uh, is being represented by uh, Labor-aligned lawyer Josh Bornstein. Uh, remember, this is this is all costing the, the taxpayers money here, but imagine uh, being a federal MP's chief of staff. You may, I mean, you may, may need to uh, j uh, work extra hours, have your phone on at all times to answer media inquiry. I mean, she's been in campaigns before. Surely, surely she knows that uh, being in a, whether it's being a lobbyist, like she's had lobbying jobs that, you know, that's not a nine to five job. I mean, if you're trying to achieve something that uh, you believe in, you're going to be campaigning for it uh, a lot of a lot of your time. So yes, uh, obviously Monique Ryan, uh, she is uh, the the single biggest drag on on the teals. I mean, we hardly hear much about the others uh, apart from apart from her. Uh, also, basically because she she is a a mask and and COVID uh, Karen. Uh, now, as, as uh, Pete Ozyman said, uh, that uh, the, the, there's also uh, Sydney's Mardi Gras coming up, but it's also being rolled into Sydney hosting World Pride. So there's going to be a separate World, World Pride uh, march across the, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Mardi Gras parade is returning to the Oxford Street. It uh, was thankfully the last... Uh, last two years of the the pandemic at the SCG, which meant that uh, the general public couldn't be exposed to its degeneracy and depravity unless they bought a, a ticket for it, but that's changed this year. And uh, Lyle Shelton, who's running as a independent in the New South Wales Upper House and also is National Director of Family First, this article has gone viral, Libs Fund World Pride Festival Targeting Children. And it goes through and includes the disgusting images uh, of, like about some of the events. So there's uh, promotions for animal-themed fetish parties, pictures of naked men in sexual positions, and a general kaleidoscope of Rorch, several events on the official website Target Children. So yes, I think I think I think that's enough there. But yes, this is all uh, funded uh, by the the Perite government. Uh, uh, last year, I even wrote a blurb uh, welcoming people to Sydney for the the Mardi Gras. And obviously, he's uh, he's obviously ashamed of his uh, the Nazi uniform that he he wore at his twenty first uh, twenty years ago. Uh, but uh, he has uh, got got ready to go. Uh, for his uh, his uh, world world pride, and uh, this was a, a image uh, that was uploaded by Carl Kutazi uh, when he was kicked out of the New South Wales Liberal Party again. This is Dom Perrottet's outfit for world pride, which is obviously much more acceptable uh, in a, the current year uh, than a fancy Nazi dress outfit. Now, I wonder if uh, they they have uh, any monkeypox uh, vaccines at uh, the at any of these uh, LGBT uh, festivals. Uh, uh, thankfully, uh, the unlike the COVID vaccines, the monkeypox vaccines actually worked, and so the the curve is flattened of monkeypox cases because the men who have sex with men had a good incentive to get the vaccine so they could keep having uh, unprotected sex. Now, obviously, monkeypox was a big bust uh, for uh, the people who really are eager for the next pandemic or are wanting COVID to, to mutate into something super more deadly. They're really warped people. They're like, oh, just you wait. I can't wait. You living your life. Oh, there's going to be something around the corner and you're all going to suffer and we're going to be smug, smiling behind our masks. Well, the, the latest alarm is that uh, there has uh, been the largest ever outbreak of bird flu in the UK, and it's spilling over into mammals such as otters and foxes. In 
uh, the UK. Now, uh, humans can get bird flu from uh, birds. So people are being advised not to get close to dead birds or sick birds. Uh, but because like we are mammals, uh, because mammals are being infected, so there is alarm about that uh, avian flu is the official name that this could be the next pandemic and it has a 60% a fatality rate. But as uh, epidemiolog rational epidemiologists have pointed out, a virus with a 60% fatality rate, I mean, it's going to kill or severely uh, injure, uh, make sick an infected person long before they can spread it to heaps of people. What made COVID uh, such a uh, super infectious is because people were spreading it asymptomatically. They didn't know that they had it. And so it, it, there was obviously people who showed symptoms, some people who, sh who didn't show symptoms uh, as well. But uh, obviously uh, with COVID, uh, we had uh, for the first uh, two years, uh, lockdowns and, and mask mandates. We, were, we still had mask mandates last year. Uh, now, remember the, the science at the beginning that, uh, that face masks uh, didn't work against respiratory viruses, but now the science is back. And so the Cochrane Review on Masks, which is the first comprehensive review on masking during the COVID pandemic, uh, has uh, found uh, that uh, masking on a population level uh, doesn't lead to improved outcomes when it comes to the spread of respiratory viruses. In fact, hand washing is more effective as well. And it's there's not even much evidence that N95 masks make any difference as well. So there's the sci the real science has made a comeback. And this this is a comprehensive study. The all the evidence that masks work were based on lab studies, but labs are not real life but obviously there's still the covidians wearing masks uh, and there's also ugly people wearing masks this is another study frontiers in psychology from a south korean study and i see plenty of fat and ugly people wearing masks and it just seems to be like i just used to think that they they wore them uh because they thought that it would keep them alive uh even though you know maybe if they ate healthier and exercised uh, that might help their chances against COVID rather than slapping a mask across their their fat faces so yes the the real science is making a comeback well a full face p3 uh, only works if it's worn properly and like it's really difficult to have a any type of like you know no matter how suffocating the mask is be 100 effective because you know that humans take them off uh to eat uh drink and also not many humans sleep with masks on shower with masks on there probably are some so yes there'll be people who'll be masking forever um don't you don't, don't uh, i still see them uh every almost almost every day uh when i uh when i go out now over in the the united states uh, there has been a uh, the hot air uh scandal uh, not just i'm not just talking about mer metaphorical political hot air there is the ccp's hot air weather spy balloon they claim it's a civilian weather balloon weather balloon totally not for spying and it flew across the united states uh for three at least three days until it was uh shot down uh the uh, by uh, a U.S. military jet. Uh, this is the the moment. Checking Twitter on several different official. Oh, well, I believe it just happened there. That was it. 
live, raw, and unfiltered. It appears that that China spy balloon. Now, even though the, the Biden administration let uh, this weather spy balloon float over uh, the United States uh, for, <laughs> for, for three to four days at least, uh, this was a, yeah, it started off in Montana went all the way down to South Carolina. Now, apparently it couldn't be shot down because uh, over these largely rural states because the, the debris could be threatening. And uh, But Joe Biden still took the credit for its uh, belated destruction. Briefed on the balloon, I ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground. They decided that the best time to do that was as it got over water outside within our within 12 mile limit. It successfully took it down and I want to compliment our aviators who did it and we'll have more to report on this uh, a little later. Thank you. Mr. President, what did you say about China? What's your message to China? You were saying the recommendation from your was from your national security. I told them to shoot it down. Oh, Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the recommendation. They from said to me, let's wait till the safest place to do it. What does this mean for China, relation to China? All right, short and sweet. Now, it seemed to me that the reason they took their sweet time shooting down that weather balloon, I mean, it wasn't a plane. I mean, a plane uh, would have a huge amount of debris that were shot down. This is a, well, a weather spy uh, balloon uh, going across largely rural United States. It sounded like that uh, the Biden administration for a number of days was too timid uh, to upset the, the Chinese uh, who said that they reserved the right to engage in similar uh, conduct. Uh, they said it was an overreaction to, to shoot down this, uh, what they termed was a civilian weather a balloon. Uh, maybe this is also why uh, Biden uh, didn't want to uh, shoot it down because uh, his son uh, was on that uh, that Chinese balloon as well. And of course, it's been very well established uh, from uh, Hunter Biden's uh, laptop leaks and just through also a investigative journalism, the, the Biden family's uh, business dealings uh, with uh, the CCP, including when uh, Biden uh, was vice president. And uh, the fake news media, uh, they're trying to claim that oh, this happened uh, multiple times over, over Trump's time as president. Like, that's basically their excuse these days. Well, it happened under Trump. And this is why, well, also why they've also been trying to uh, downplay uh, the Biden uh, classified documents uh, saga. It's they're sort of been saying, yeah, but uh, Trump's Trump Trump was the first to, first to be discovered doing it, and what he did was 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 much worse. Uh, there's classified documents being found at uh, Biden's Delaware home uh, and his uh, beach property. Uh, as well, and of course, of course, Mike Pence. Uh, there's also been classified documents at uh, at his place, as well. Uh, now, what if a missile was coming to the United States? Would the Biden administration take four days to uh, to shoot it down? Now, if you have been uh, following the uh, the AI world, and you will know that. Uh, Chat, uh, Chat GPT uh, is the the, the latest uh, big thing, uh, which uh, can write essays, uh, songs, poems, computer code, write movie plots. Uh, but it is being created by a bunch of uh, woke SJWs, uh, so it won't praise white people. Uh, won't, as uh, Paul Joseph Watson, he released uh, several. Uh, videos about chat B, uh, TPG. It'll write a, a poem printing, uh, praising Hunter Biden, uh, but not Marjorie Taylor Greene. It will praise all the other races apart from white people. So it basically says, I cannot create controversial content. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, chat GPT, uh, the fact that it can write essays, uh, and also write code, 
uh, it's it, it sent alarm bells through companies like Google and also universities and schools. You add that uh, to the already deep fake uh, technology. Now, I believe that uh, artificial intelligence like chat B, uh, GPT and deep fakes should only be used for satirical and humorous purposes uh, like uh, this, uh, this deep fake of Sean Hannity opening up an episode of his Fox News program about a Hunter Biden revelation. And this was also posted on Paul Joseph Watson's channel. All right. Thanks, Tucker. And tonight we start with a Fox News alert. OK, folks, buckle up because we have a bombshell report on Hunter Biden. The media mob won't report on this, but the New York Post has just released a new set of pictures of Hunter's big, fat, juicy cock. Instead of reporting on real news, CNN, or as I like to call it, the Clinton News Network, is hell-bent on taking down President Trump. But let not your heart be troubled. We will make sure this story gets the coverage it deserves. The radical Dems do not want you, the American people, to see just how girthy and succulent Hunter Biden's schlong is. AOC and her radical left squad view you, the America First Patriots, as deplorable, smelly Walmart people. They refuse to let us see the monstrous, veiny behemoth that is Hunter Biden's ding dong. But here at Fox News, we are fair, balanced and unafraid. <laughs> that actually does sound like something that Sean Hannity would say. And it does describe uh, some of the more gratuitous conservative uh, coverage of uh, the Hunter Biden videos. I mean, showing videos of him smoking crack and nude as well that is just gratuitous like i like obviously the fact like the the biden family is has been abusing their position and arguably committing uh treason uh with their dealings with the the, the ccp but i still feel sorry for for hunter biden because he's clearly being used by his family i mean he was he was the screw-up son uh now uh, Biden's other son, now deceased Beau Biden, he was the golden boy, Attorney General of Delaware, uh, was being groomed to be a president of the United States, but he died from chemicals in the Iraq war. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Hunter Biden, obviously, he, he has these substance issues, and, yeah, um, this is why he's engaging in all of all of this part of the reason why he, he can be manipulated into engaging in this conduct uh, obviously he has agency himself uh but yes there's no need to publish nudes or gratuitous the uh, gratuitous uh drug use from him as well all right so well over over time uh, I have got an update from Dewey DeBoer about the, the Auckland floods. So he and his uh, family home uh, was unharmed, but his uh, neighbor's home uh, was not uh, not safe. Uh, well, it was uh, severely damaged. And uh, now the, it's the first crisis of the, the new prime minister, uh, Chris Hipkins, which he's, of course, blamed the floods on climate change, even though this seems to be just uh, La Nina making its way over to New Zealand quite late. I mean, did New Zealand know that we've had floods in nearly every major state in Australia uh, throughout 2022? And uh, But they are also uh, using this uh, opportunity, well, this crisis, never let a crisis go to waste, uh, to whack uh, the new Conservative Mayor of Auckland, Wayne Brown, saying his uh, performance has not been up to standard and he's issued an apology, basically uh, admitting, that, uh, admitting that his performance is not up to, to standard, which means they're just going to whack him uh, some more. Now, to finish off, I have some excellent news, is that Wilmsfront will be returning. Uh, at the new night of Sunday, so Sunday the 19th of February, 8.30 p.m. Melbourne time on the Wilmsfront channels, YouTube, DLive and Odyssey. Uh, this is uh, because Thursdays now uh, is uh, at 8 p.m. Melbourne time. That's when the excellent uh, Joel Davis and Blair Cottrell live stream is on, on Odyssey. I know that uh, some of you uh, are viewers of that stream as well, particularly you, 
Lady of Shalot. Uh, I'm in Blair's uh, Odyssey chat. So make sure that you create an account over in Odyssey, uh, not just uh, to uh, interact with the, the chat, uh, say hello to, to me, uh, but also so you can subscribe to the Wilmsfront channel on Odyssey as well, because that's got the full Tim's News Explosion archive because YouTube has deleted several videos, uh, episodes of this show. So that'll be uh, the return of Wilmsfront. Also, uh, choose that it's getting uh, like we're back to the point now where there's basically a show every night now because on Tuesday nights, there's a Australia First uh, with Josh Howes over on Crazy TV. And then on Wednesday night is uh, the new XYZ live uh, as well with uh, Dave Hiscock and the, and the racers. So there's really something every night now you, d you don't need to watch uh, Sky After Dark uh, BoomerCon cringe. I still would recommend you uh, uh, watch and listen to, to Alan Jones and also Fred Paul on ADH uh, TV because that leaves Sky After Dark for dead. I listen to the podcast when I'm in the, the car, so there's uh, plenty of good content uh, coming up as well. Of course, in addition to Tim's News Explosion, the return of Wilmsfront, make sure you keep checking out the unshackled.net uh, for our latest news articles and the, the Unshackled Productions archive. and. Also, if you uh, don't like to send Super Chats during the show, you can support the Unshackled by taking out an Unshackled membership with a bronze $5 per month, silver $10 per month, gold $25 per month, platinum $50 per month, or send a donation, a, a single donation as well. So thank you so much for your company and support as well and for a fun chat. As always, I'll see you next week on air uh, next Monday for Tim's News Explosion. New reports from Tiger Mountain coming out uh, every week. And uh, I'll also see you all uh, on my Telegram chat as well, uh, because I'm on Telegram, Gab, and also Mines. And also I've got a getter now, uh, but I'll also be uh, interacting in Blair and Joel's uh, Odyssey on Thursday uh, as well. Uh, so good night, everybody. Stay safe, stay sane, uh, stay clown free, clown world free. Good night, everybody. Tim's News Explosion. 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 Tim's news explosion.